Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I'm finally going to do something that has been on my list for a really long time. We are going to try to use the Misto pressurized spray bottle with acid dyes to spray on a light layer of color, hopefully, for maybe a glazed-like appearance that we have more control over. That's the plan! We'll see how it goes, but I'm really excited to try this. I have tried various spray bottles using uh, food coloring in the past, and I'm now ready to try this with acid dyes. But please make sure that any equipment you're using with commercial dyes is dedicated for dyeing yarn and isn't also used for food. So the Misto that I am using has never been used to prepare food in my kitchen. It is one that is dedicated for Chemnitz experiments. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's Dye Pot Weekly lab partner, Bernie Crumb. Bernie, thank you so much for supporting this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and I really hope that you're going to enjoy this video and love how your yarn turns out. Today we are going to dye some Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Poly Amid and it has a high twist, which is really, really good for a glazed type appearance that we're going today. I already pre-soaked the yarn for about half an hour, but I'm now adding it to new bath with, let's do three tablespoons of white vinegar. I want there to be acid in the yarn because we want the color to strike to the yarn uh, on the faster side. That's the look that we're going for here today. So yeah, I would say now we just have to get set up to dye the yarn. This is our star of the show today, the Misto Pressurized Spray Bottle. I like it for adding just a really shallow application of color on yarn because not a lot of liquid comes out, but there is some pressure because you pump this up to create some pressure uh, inside here. And so it only sprays if it's pressurized. Let me show you with some water. And so I've added a little bit of water in. I'm now adding the, I don't know what you would call these different parts. Fill only halfway. There needs to be space to pressurize the air. So we'll pump this down and then and so you can do you get a fair amount of liquid but and the spray lasts a while this can is really supposed to be used for like oil or instead of Pam or something like that but we're gonna fill it with some dye just as a word of safety and caution, just like we don't want to use anything for food, I recommend using some eye protection during this. Uh, you really, really, really don't want to get acid dyes in your eyes, <laughs> so please use precautions. To help combat uh, over spraying and making a mess, I'm going to do all the dyeing inside this catering steam pan just so that way I don't spray <laughs> acid dye all over my kitchen. And by fill, I think I actually want to dilute the dye that's going to go in here first. Right here I have some uh, Dharma Acid Dye, a 1% stock solution in deep purple. I want to start low when it comes to our concentrations. So right here I have a half cup of water, which is about 120 milliliters. And I'm going to add two teaspoons, or about 10 milliliters, of the deep purple dye. Now this is going to look very brownish slash rusty at right now. It does turn more purple when it heats up. So that is just the way that this particular dye works. It might mean it's not a good choice, but depending on our results, we will try this more uh, <laughs> later on today. So I am now going to fill my bottle Oh, that's actually pretty perfect. Yeah, about a half cup of liquid is enough to be about half full. That is good to know. And we're going to close this up. The one downside to using this kind of spray bottle is that you, if you want multiple colors all at once, you would need multiple bottles. But Jacquard actually does have, I think, a pressurized bottle called You Can. 
So there are options that are intended for dyeing items. I sque squeezed out most of the liquid from the pre-soak. I'm gonna bring it over here, spreading the yarn out as much as I can. We will be moving it, so this we'll see what kind of coverage we do, but maybe I'll wish that it was more concentrated. Ooh, the dye definitely could be more concentrated. Oh, maybe it's with contact with acid. So right now, I'm sort of just spraying all over because it's not that pigmented. Uh, and let's zoom in. Okay, the color is pretty pastel. Let's look. I don't think it's going really far down. I think we've got some asymmetric coverage. Uh, I think that what I wanna do is spray it all over and then we will do this again using, oh funny, look at the difference in color until it like reacts with the acid. Um, I think I wanna spray this all over, steam set it, and then we'll try this again with more dye so we can see more. I do wanna be careful with the total amount of liquid that I'm adding in here because if I add too much, then we could end up um, not seeing the light coverage anymore. But, so far, this isn't that messy. Ooh, I should try putting the yarn through the spin dryer next, too. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. Now, some people might ask about using this to get speckles, and, eh, when I tried this with food coloring, we really did not end up getting good speckles. So, if you really want speckles, I recommend a more dry-based technique. So just keep that in mind. I don't need perfect coverage. Uh, but I do want more coverage. This is a really fun way to get a tonal. You just have to pump it up. I definitely want to try this again with something more saturated. We could also try adding acid to the container. But it's nice to have just like a starting place. There is going to be white left in this color. I'm so curious to see how this will look once it's dry with the layers. You know that I'm really thinking and focusing when I'm not talking very much. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I know it would be hard to do a ton of yarn like this just because my arm would get tired, but I am intrigued. Basically, I'm looking for large patches of white. The coverage doesn't have to be complete or anything. This is gonna be tonal. Um, if we wanted complete coverage, we would not be doing this technique. Um, so I would say it looks like we're getting really light coverage. It's gonna be really, really hard to tell while the yarn is still wet. I'm curious about how much liquid I used. I used a lot of the liquid. So half a cup is a pretty good amount. Hmm. Let's see. All right, I think I'm satisfied. And I will say we've got pastel. I, I, I'll I know once it's done if, like I open this up and if the plies, if the color feels really, really shallow. But let's go steam set it. I just placed the yarn in a steamer basket. It is currently heating up. And I'm going to steam it for about 30 minutes once things uh, start getting really, really steamy in here. I just turned the pot on. I am actually going to remove the rest of the liquid. See, that looks pretty dark, but the color that we actually got was not that dark. So, hmm, let's do approximately, approximately a quarter cup of dye. 
mixed in with about a quarter cup of water. These proportions are very approximate, but we will see. The dye is going to, or the liquid is going to be thicker this time. I hope that we don't clog the misto. That is a concern for sure. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure your dye is well dissolved. Pump this up. And then I'll go get the yarn, which I popped into the same vinegar soak that we made before. And um, just imagine, we're doing this over white yarn. Imagine if we've already dyed this in a color, and then we're layering on the second color like that. So if we had like a blue tonal. Okay, this actually doesn't look that much uh, paler, but we'll see how it goes when it reacts with the acid. I will say, but I'm also layering less color on spots. So I think I might want to go with the 1%. Uh, it's looking still very brown. It has not shifted, but there is more dye. So, hmm, it's really hard to know. Like the, the color, if I move just like a couple strands, the color is not going very deep through. I don't think it's penetrating. When I say penetrating, I mean that if I pick up an area that is a little saturated and turn it over, eh, it might be going through, but in some cases we see color on one side of the strand and not the other. So that is the kind of light coverage that could give us a glazed type feel. But I, I should have, I really should have removed I should try to be very light with the amount of liquid that I add, and I really, really should have removed um, as much liquid as possible. But you can see the difference of what the color looks like now versus when, um, versus like it looks so much more brown and it's turning more purple as it is on the yarn. Uh, this is really fun. This is really, really fun and just so different. So it does look, right now with a light hand on the button, I'm getting what looks like more speckles. You potentially could get speckles with this. I think it would take a lot of practice uh, with your hand uh, and how like you dye the fiber. I do want to pay close attention around the ties. I don't mind if there is some white left, but I want the whole skein to feel pretty consistent. So the areas where you're most likely to have more white are just around these ties because you can't spread things out nearly as far. So I think that, again, for speckles, I would not, this is not the technique I would pick. For speckles, I prefer dry powder and that's what I recommend. So I think it's coming out heavier. Yeah, I should re-pump it up. Re-pump it up. So we get that light coverage. Uh, and so that's one reason why I like the Misto versus some other spray bottles that I've used is that the coverage really does feel like you can get a lighter spray. Whereas with just like other spray bottles, I feel like the coverage I get is um, not as light. I feel like I only get heavier coverage. At some point, Rebecca, you need to just stop. It's really, really hard to know what the actual color is going to look like. Um, and how the coverage is. Okay, I am going to, nope, do a tiny bit more. Okay, I'm officially going to stop and we're gonna set this aside because the steamer basket is still full. So I am going to sit this and set this yarn into a pan and try to not move it around. So the coverage feels really light, but again, it's gonna be really helpful to look at it once the color has set and once things especially once things are dry, because then I can look within the plies and see how shallow that coverage is. Okay, and I'm now going to wipe the pan. 
because I want to try this a third time and I think that I might want to do something slightly differently. I, I'm going to take this leftover dye, add it. Oh, we used almost all of that. So yeah, with that one we used probably about 0.6 grams of dye or so. Hmm. I almost want to add acid to the spray. And I think I'm going to do that. Well, not well, because some of it went in the pan, but I added approximately one tablespoon of white vinegar into the bottle, and now I am going to add um, approximately a quarter cup, but I'm not going to dilute it this time. So it is technically diluted with the vinegar that I placed in the bottle, but that is it. And so we have less volume in here, but the dye is the most concentrated that we've seen yet. And let me go pre-soak one more skein of yarn in the same vinegar mixture. All right, I did an, made an effort to squeeze out as much as I could. I did not put it through my spin dryer or anything though. All right, and I believe, let's just check. Make sure we are well pressurized and hmm, that doesn't seem that well. But you can actually see where the spray is going. We are getting definitely the most speckly kind of look, probably because the dye is the most concentrated that we've had yet. So if I did really light coverage right now, we might end up with speckles. Um, but overall it's not that pigmented. So I am so curious how this is going to work and how it'll end up and uh, I am so curious because this is so fun. I really love applications that can be so completely random on yarn and I like having that control over where I place the color. So again, it would be really hard to say do a sweater's worth of yarn like this with some level of consistency, but I suppose if you get the technique down and you determine the total amount of dye you want to use on each skein, you could achieve some amount of consistency. It's just the coverage, I'm not getting like uh, airbrushed, perfect coverage. That's not entirely what I'm going for, but just in case you think that that's what you might get, I would love to play with a food coloring airbrush someday. I think that that would be really cool. The goal right now is to focus primarily on breaking up large patches of white. Um, Yeah, that is definitely a priority with this particular one. And so you can see that we've got some amount of color all over, but just working to expose what we can. We might be running low. This, don't forget we had ha about half the volume that we had in the previous previous round, just with a completely different volume from what we had last time. So it's more concentrated, and of course we added that acid. Aha! White. Make sure before you spray that you are pointing down. And let's see, looking for large, patches of white and when I come in after waiting a minute you can see the to the difference in hue again Whoop. 
you can, and you can see when the dye starts coming out much more, um, there's less pressure. I think that when the volume gets low, you have to pump it up extra just because, think about it, the you get more air located in there. Uh, let's see. I mean, I feel like we might be out of liquid. Yes, we are out of liquid. I was like, I don't think that's a pressure thing. All right, so I'm gonna call it on this one with the amount of dye that we have. I'm now going to take this last skein, place it in its own pan, and let's compare these two and see if we see anything. Ah, it's not conclusive. But this skein right here had no acid in the spray. They pre-soaked in the same amount. They have about the same total amount of dye on them. This one was more concentrated. I see more coverage and spread here. It still might be really shallow. Here I see more pastel, there's more variation, but that could be from having the less volume. But having that additional acid also could help the color strike faster over here. So pink had vinegar, blue did not <laughs> in the spray. When the steamer basket fills up, I will put both of these in there at the same time. And while we wait, I'm gonna go clean up and I will save all of our leftover dye for I don't know yet, something else. Okay, it has been 30 minutes. Here is our first that is more pastel. I'm gonna remove it from the pot and set it aside so it can cool. Although we will wait for our second and third colorways to steam set. So, I'm gonna let these steam for 30 minutes. Okay, I am going to turn off the steamer basket and the yarn looks extremely similar to the way that it did before we steamed it with having more variation in the one where we sprayed the vinegar and a bit less where we didn't. And so I'm gonna go set this with the first skein to let everything cool so then we can wash it. I do think that we have a glazed feel, which I will zoom in really closely once the yarn is dry. One place where we could get an even more obvious result with the spray is if I used a thicker yarn. If I use something like Muse or a Superwash Merino Twist worsted or heavy worsted weight yarn, since there, there's a different ratio of surface area to volume, you can see that shallow coverage of color even better on yarn like that. So I think that that's probably what I'll use to try this out next time. Let's wash all of the Misto sprayed yarn. We have the most pastel, and then our more saturated, and then our most saturated, which is coming now. Although I guess most saturated, eh, I mean the, the liquid in the bottle was the most saturated, even though Overall, I think that those two colors, the amount of pigmentation is so similar. I am not expecting to see any bleeding here today. And we've got a beautiful deep purple color with some hints of blue from where it broke. I'm gonna add some dish soap into our rinse. What I like to check for is color coming off and I do not see any bleeding. So I am gonna be rinsing the soak out, uh, rinse this a few more times, then I will put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. We dyed three skeins of yarn using our Misto spray bottle and some deep purple acid dye. And we made the dye progressively more concentrated in each of the samples. And for the last one, we actually added some vinegar in with the dye. And I have to say that I think that the last one we did where we had the acid in with the dye is my favorite. Now, if you want a more even application, uh, the second one, we have a very nice 
dusting of purple. And by more even, it's not even, it's still very tonal, but we have more almost speckles on the third one. Note that I say almost speckles. This is more, I guess, patchy, more random, and the colors have more depth and shift. There's more contrast when we had the acid in there. Now, if I take a closer look at the yarn, in some areas it may feel glazed, but the color did go uh, through a lot of the strand. I think that if we were using a thicker yarn, say a uh, Superwash Merino Twist or something even that is one ply and you know worsted or thicker, then we might see a more shallow application of dye, but the pressure gave enough force that the dye went all the way through. Now, if we had more acid in both the yarn before and in the spray, maybe that would make more of a difference. But we conceivably would also want to mix the dyes at a stronger than 1% stock solution because we could keep layering the color on and it could build up and get deeper. So that is an option. But this isn't as dark as it really could be. And so maybe if you had a 2% stock solution of a saturated color, then you would get something that felt really dark. Looking closer at what I'm calling our more even, I mean, it's not even, but we weren't, we didn't want something that was even. We have a really light dusting of color and there are some areas where if I twist it apart, there is some unevenness in there and with the other one as well, but mostly it did penetrate. I think that this technique would be really, really great for layering different colors on top of one another because it gives you a little bit of control over what the placement of the tonal and is a bit of fun. Pastels can be challenging and I am pretty impressed with how this worked to just get, actually this one feels the most glazed, probably because with the least amount of pigment, it sort of just stuck a little more to the outside. But I mean, I still wish uh, that the penetration was even shallower. There are a few things that I think may help. I think having the spray bottle further away from the yarn might help the, the color spread a little more so you get less liquid on different sections. But that being said, this technique does come with some risks. There are risks of overspraying and making a mess in your kitchen or studio or wherever you are dyeing your yarn. But there's also a risk that you could spray yourself. Uh, that you could accidentally uh, spray in your face and that is something to be very cognizant of and make sure that you take appropriate precautions. Wear safety glasses when you are doing this technique. I am so thrilled with these colors. Uh, challenges and what have you. Uh, I'm thinking that this might be a technique that is better suited for being outside, but I am willing to explore this more in the future. Bernie Crumb, thank you so much for being my lab partner and supporting this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I am in love with this colorway and I really hope that you will enjoy this yarn. So Bernie, thank you again so much for your support. If you would like to learn how you as a viewer can become a lab partner, support an episode of Dye Pot Weekly and get shout outs and yarn from the video, uh, you can find more details in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. What kinds of variations would you do to this technique? One limitation that I see is that if you only have one can, then if you wanna do two colors, you might need to wash it in between. And so swapping back and forth between colors isn't necessarily easy, but it probably isn't that bad anyway. It's really easy to clear out the color from the spray. So I look forward to hearing your suggestions on how you would modify this. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss new videos. We have a lot of fun, and I love to film myself trying new things for the first time on camera, so that way we can all learn together from my successes and mistakes. And I do make a lot of mistakes, but sometimes we have things that are really, really big wins and really inspires me for how I am going to proceed in many, many videos going forward. So 
I am so excited for you to see what is coming up this year. We've got so many beautiful colors and thank you so much for joining me on this journey.